Okay, everyone, it looks like we're um, just past the hour. It looks like a lot of us are in here. Um, we're really excited for the amount of people who are here today. Um, shows that there's a lot of interest in this in this latest release of Retain Unified Archiving with uh, Skype for Business Support. Um, we're excited to bring you this topic um, and excited for everyone's participation today. A few things just to begin with, just so everyone is aware. Um, if you do have questions, feel free to put those through in the question panel there or in the chat panel and uh, we'll get to those. We'll have some time at the end for questions and answers, but um, if there are questions as we're going through the presentation, feel free to put those in and we'll uh, and we'll get to those and if they're pressing, we'll be sure to answer them as we're going along if they're pertinent to what we're talking about. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to just introduce myself. I'm a solution marketing manager here at Microfocus. My name is Q Mangus. Um, I'm particularly focusing on the information archiving piece with uh, Retain. And I'm going to be presenting here today on uh, this latest release in Retain. So a couple of things just to take note of. We do have a mixed audience here, meaning we have people who are currently using Retain and those who are new to Retain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to tailor the message to both of you. We're going to start off um, this presentation by talking about what is the latest in Retain, what's new, um, so for those of you who are familiar with Retain, this section will be specifically geared toward you, those who are using Retain. Um, but it also is pertinent to those who are not familiar with Retain or who are not using it because you can see what's new and, and a lot of this stuff does pertain to you on how you could potentially benefit from that, um, how it can help you with, with your overall information archiving uh, strategy and plan and making sure that, you have, that you're compliant and that you're managing all of your data. So let's just jump into it. So let's talk first about this latest release of Retain. So what is in what is new in Retain? Um, the biggest piece, and this is what we're going to touch on today, um, and we're going to hit take a lot of our time today focusing on this, and that's the support for Skype for Business Archiving. Um, this is a big one. I know that there's a lot of organizations who are using Skype for Business, and they need oversight on those instant messaging. Um, another one is... Um, We've completed the integration with uh, Archive Social, and so we have that enterprise social media archiving and monitoring with Archive Social. We've had a number of webinars where we've talked about this functionality, how it works, how you can have oversight on your um, business social media accounts, your, your organization's social media accounts, and any official accounts. Um, so I would encourage you to check out those recorded webinars to learn more about how that can benefit you. But just know that you have the ability to archive your all these platforms that we show here, your Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google+, Instagram, Pinterest, Flickr, YouTube, and Vimeo. You'll be able to archive that information in that same central archive of Retain with your uh, email and mobile communication. We'll talk a little bit about that uh, a little later on. Another thing that's great is this, um, for those of you who are currently using Retain, is um, there's a new functionality to have multiple modules of the same type. So what that means is say you have uh, multiple instances of the same type of email system. So if you're running uh, multiple instances, let's just take one for example is uh, GroupWise. So if you have um, four or five groupwise systems. Um, you can have multiple modules of the same type. Um, there's not an additional cost for each module. It's just the, the cost is per seat. Um, so that's going to make it a much easier for you to um, truly have that unified archiving that we talk about. And then of course with the uh, with the acquisition of Guava by Microfocus we are now uh, integrating uh, microfocus branding into Retain. So those are some things to just be aware of, especially for those who are familiar with Retain on what is new. Now let's touch on Skype for Business Archiving and the important and why that's it, why that could be important to you. So let's do an overview of Skype for Business Archiving, then I'll touch on um, why you should be doing this. So first of all, um, with uh, this additional functionality with uh, Skype for Business Support, we're really excited for that. We know that a lot of people um, are using Skype for Business and they need that oversight um, and they need to be able to go back and see what has been communicated on Skype for Business. So Retain now has that functionality. Um, so what you can do is you can archive instant messages or conversations, attachments and meetings. Um, it works with Office 365 or Exchange Archiving. So the module that you have, so if you currently are a retained customer and you have Office 365 or Exchange Archiving, the Skype for Business Archiving will 
just work. <laughs> There's nothing that you have to do additional. You just have to make sure that you're on the latest release of Retain. So those of you who are have an on-premise solution of, of Retain, um, you need to upgrade to the latest version, which is Retain 4.2. Those of you who are using a cloud version of Retain, it's automatically updated for you. And so you will see that that um, that Skype for Business will start to appear in your archive. And like I said, there's no additional cost for this um, above the ex Office 365 or Exchange archiving. So just know that this adds value to those of you who are, who are um, archiving those platforms. So like I said, if you have Office 365 or Exchange archiving, you just need to get on that latest version. If you don't have that, um, archiving on for Exchange or Office 365 with Retain, um, you will, if you then implement that, if you uh, get that implemented into your organization, you will have Skype for Business as well. So those of you who are looking to archive your Skype for Business messages, all you need to do is be able to uh, um, implement Retain and uh, have that Office 365 and Exchange archiving. So you do need to have um, Office 365 or Exchange using Skype for Business that way, and that's how we can uh, archive it for you. So the great thing about that is that now you would have you will have oversight and compliance for Skype for Business, and as I stated, that is that is needed out there, and a lot of people um, have seen and have discussed with us the need to be able to archive Skype for Business, and now we offer that for you. So the the question here on everything we've talked about is how does this really affect you? Why? Um, should you care <laughs> about what Retain can do for you, and especially why should you care that that this uh, that Skype for Business is now supported, and along with what we were talking about social media and those multiple modules, why sh why should you care? How does this affect you? Well, I want to get down to the base of what Retain is all about, and why you need to be archiving. So, um, in the past. Archiving has traditionally been viewed as email. So you will archive your email communication. You'll take that information, you'll store it somewhere. It'll be hidden in the corner. Uh, you can check a, check a checkbox saying, okay, I'm good. We have an archive. Um, I'm now compliant. But that is the view of the past. <laughs> and what I mean is that Archiving has evolved. This this idea of email archiving has now evolved, where it's not just about email. It's about information archiving. And so that means, and so we like to call it next generation archiving or archiving 2.0. So what that means is that now it's not just about having an email archive that sits in the corner that, that you don't worry about. It's about having a solution where you can access your information, where you can quickly get to data, where you can use that data to learn about what your organization um, is doing, the tone of your organization, tone of social media, how people are interacting with you, um, what business initiatives have happened and how the reaction in your organization has, has been based on that new initiative. And so that's what information archiving is now. It's not just email. It's about email plus your social media plus your mobile communication. It's about all of that information, all of that electronic communication being archived in one central archive that you can access, that you can use that information to be able to know what's going on in your organization, and that you can have that information in case of litigation. And, of course, it's to make sure that you comply with, with uh, regulations. So those are the reasons and what has happened with information archiving. Um, and what's interesting, uh, just a note here, is that this was a, a recent survey done by Osterman Research, and they found that most organizations understand and are archiving email, um, but they are not archiving instant messaging, Facebook, uh, Twitter, or text messaging. And so... There is a gap between what needs to be archived and what people are actually archiving. And that's where uh, Retain and, and what we're going to talk about today can really help you, help you bridge that gap between what needs to be archived and what you're currently archiving. And that's where, of course, we added that functionality for Skype for Business to be able to help you make sure that you can archive your, your uh, corporate instant messaging. And so I just want to hit that once again so that everybody's aware that that is really the point of what we're talking about today when it comes to retain is that you need 
an archiving solution that will allow you to archive all of your electronic communication, all of your business communication. And you need that to be readily available and accessible um, so that you can have that next generation archiving and that you can comply with regulations and be able to get to your data. Um, and then speaking of regulations, I just want to touch really quick on a few things that may affect you um, depending on where you are. Um, first and foremost is uh, the Freedom of Information Act. Now this FOIA applies to any government agency and this is not just in North America. Many countries have this as well. So obviously if you're in North America, uh, the United States has this, Canada has this, um, but other countries have a very similar law to that. Um, and then, of course, depending on what state you're in, um, there are states that have similar laws to the Freedom of Information Act with their sunshine laws. Then there's uh, FISMA and FERPA. Um, once again, these deal with, uh, like, FERPA is for education in particular. Um, you have HIPAA and high tech that's for, for health care. You have all these other ones that are for uh, financial. If you're in finance, uh, you know that you're heavily regulated. You have the Dodd-Frank Act, GLB, NASD, IROC, etc. So there's a number of regulations that affect you, and these um, can vary depending on where you're at, what's... Um, meaning what country you're in, um, they have regulations that, that deal with what you need to do. And then, of course, there's the FRCP, which is the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure. And what this one does is this one applies to everybody. And it basically says that, um, the, this is in North America, that the courts have come out and said, okay, um, if you're involved in litigation that deals with uh, your company and you're asked to produce information it's not just email you need to be able to produce social media and mobile communication as well um, and it's viewed the same way by the courts so basically in a nutshell what these regulations are saying is that you need to be able to you need to be archiving your information um, you need to have that information stored and readily available um, if you don't you're not in compliance with these regulations and you could be subject to audits um, fines etc so you need to be able to do that and then of course above and beyond regulations the reason why and like I said before why does this matter to you why does this affect you um, you need to comply with regulations but you also need to be able to manage your data you need to be able to know where it's at you need to be able to um, reduce your storage footprint you need to be able to um, readily and easily access your data. So that's your reasons for archiving. It's regulatory compliance. It's um, having a repository for all of your data and being able to easily access that data. And it's just being able to manage your data. We know that data stores continue to grow and that um, that data continues to be, will become outdated and redundant and trivial. Um, so you need policies that will help you make sure that you're keeping the right data and that you're keeping it for the right amount of time. And I'm going to touch more about that as we go through. Just a reminder, if you have questions, feel free to submit those through and we'll get to them. Um, I'm going to jump into retain itself and, and how this solution can benefit you. So we touched about what's new, why you should be archiving. Now we're going to touch on uh, the, the nuts and bolts of Retain and um, how each piece works and how it works together to benefit your organization. So first of all, let's just touch about what the high level part of Retain is. So Retain is a unified archiving solution. And what we mean by unified archiving is that you can archive multiple email systems, mobile communication, social media, and of course instant messaging um, in one central location, one unified archive. Um, and then that ar archive is easily accessible. We give you the ability to access it via a, a web interface, an email plugin, a mobile app, or the offline viewer. And also what we do is we allow end users to access their own personal archive so that they can search their own messages, they can restore back to their live inbox if you grant them those rights, which you can. Um, they can find older messages if they need to. Uh, so we empower your end users to be able to have access to their own personal archive. And of course with uh, with the email plugin, we give them ease of access to, to be able to get to it as they can just go right into uh, Outlook or, or GroupWise and, and they'll be able to see um, their archive. They click on that, it'll be able, they'll be able to search it and view it. And I'll show that in a minute here. 
Another thing, too, is that we feature uh, direct integration with these systems. So there's intelligent archiving. So it makes sure that nothing is lost. So when it comes to uh, email, all information is archived. And I'll touch on how it works for each platform. But just know that there's intelligent archiving, meaning that, that um, it's policy-based. So you can set a policy saying, OK, I want information that is, I want email and social media and mobile that's older than 30 days, as an example, to be archived. And it's going to stay in the archive up to seven years. And then once it hits that seven year mark, it's going to drop off the archive. You don't have to worry about that. You don't have to do anything in particular to, to get that off of there. It just drops right off, um, which is important as well, because there's this idea of you should only keep the data for as long as your your policy dictates or as regulations dictate. So you need to make sure that you have the ability to keep it for a certain amount of time and that it goes away. Um, this is what they call defensible deletion. Um, and we have a great blog post about that if you want to go and learn more about that. Um, it's just at blog.microfocus.com. Um, there's one about defensible deletion and this idea that you can delete things as long as it's uh, dictated in your policy or or for those regulated industries as long as it states that there but we make that deletion easy and I'll show that to you in just a minute on how, exactly how that works but we make that easy so that you can uh, only keep the data that you need to keep and then of course um, retain makes it so that your storage needs are lower um, because it's it's archives and using single instance storage it's compressed when it's archived um, so your archive is going to be much smaller than stuff that would be on your live system especially when it comes to email and i'll touch on email in just a minute here one other thing that's really important and this is big for any organization is we feature built-in search and browsing and e-discovery tools. So what that means is that you don't have to have another third-party solution to be able to search the archive. That's all included in Retain. Um, I will demonstrate that in just a minute on how that works, but just know that uh, you can search. Um, administrators, other named users can search the entire archive. and users can search their own personal archive and there's search tools that are built in. Um, this is unique in the in the marketplace. Most uh, most other archiving solutions um, make you have a third party solution or an add on module to be able to search um, or perform a discovery, but that's built into retain. So that's kind of the high level view of retain. Let's talk about each piece. So um, when it comes to email archiving, Retain integrates directly with the email system. So um, the systems that are supported are Exchange, Office 365, GroupWise, Gmail, and uh, IBM Notes, in addition to Bloomberg Professional, and then, of course, Skype for Business for Instant Messaging. Um, when it comes to um, Exchange and Office 365, Retain integrates directly with those systems using uh, one of three ways. You can use journaling, if that's how you want to set it up. You can use uh, EWS impersonation, so those accounts are impersonated and it pulls that in. Um, or you can use the Microsoft Recoverable Items folder. Those three ways are the ways that we integrate directly with Exchange to make sure nothing's lost, that it's all brought in to retain. Um, and then, um, like I stated, uh, to be able to get Skype for business information, that's pulled um, with that integration with Exchange at Office 365. Now with uh, GroupWise um, and Gmail, once again, it's direct integration with both of those systems. Um, uh, unlike uh, a lot of solutions, and when, especially when it comes to Gmail, they use an SMTP type archiving. That's not what we do. We, we tie directly to Gmail um, to be able to pull all the messages down. In fact, uh, in the in the last or the one of the Gartner Magic Quadrants, um, Gartner stated that uh, Retain is one of the few solutions that offers that true integration with Gmail. Um, so just be aware that some of the things that are archived, of course, are your email messages, the attachments with those emails, um, appointments, tasks, calendar items, folders, um, those kind of, and they're all archived and the folder structure is replicated and that's all brought into Retain um, and then from these email systems. I talked about eDiscovery, that's included. One thing I didn't mention is that as part of the eDiscovery tools, you have the ability to redact. Um, so if you have information that that 
you're exporting. Um, it needs to be prepared for court or for a FOIA request or for any other reason. You can redact personal information so that doesn't become part of that export. Um, that can be blacked out. And then, of course, there's that Web Access Archive Viewer. I talked a little bit about that. I'll show that later. Um, we make it easy for end users to access their personal archive and, of course, for the administrators to access the full archive. Here's an example of the email plugin. As I stated, we make it easy so as a user, if they want to access their archive, they can do it directly from this plugin. Um, they just click on retain. Um, they can view it. Um, for, particularly with Outlook, um, you can actually cache a certain time period of messages in Outlook. So if you have users that are ever offline, they could have uh, their archive cached in Outlook so they don't have to go back and ping that directly, it can be in their Outlook client to be able to have a certain amount of messages um, cached in there. Or then, of course, they can access it uh, retained directly from Outlook. I'm going to demonstrate this a little bit later, but I just wanted to show it. Here's an example of the Web Access Archive Viewer. Um, as I stated before, um, the folder structure is replicated. This is an example of an email archive. You can see that all messages are archived, all the folders are archived, and then of course all the messages within those folders are archived. So when a user goes into the Web Viewer, um, if you grant them the ability to do that, it's going to look familiar to them. It's going to look like their live uh, system. And from here, users can be given certain rights depending on what you want to do. They can have the rights to restore or to forward or to print. Um, I'll show more about how that works uh, as we go on. Um, but that's an example of, of that. And then, of course, um, an, an administrator or other named user can view the entire archive. They can search per mailbox. They can browse each mailbox. Um, we make it easy to be able to get back to that information. So that's a little bit about uh, the email piece, about the viewer, um, and the, the plugin. Now let's, now let's switch gears and move into uh, mobile communication archiving. So we touched on email and, and the solution as a whole. I want to touch on mobile because this is a big topic now, um, especially when it comes to organizations that have their employees bringing their own devices. So let me touch on each piece and the use case for each one of them. So first of all, you have BlackBerry. Um, BlackBerry, as we know, is the probably the most secure platform for mobile. Um, so there's a good chance that those of you who are in regulated industries probably have BlackBerry devices that you're using um, that, that are corporate owned and, and are issued to your employees. And so what we do with that is we tie directly to the BlackBerry Enterprise service and pull the messages down from there. So we would take the text messages, the multimedia messages, phone call logs, uh, BBM messages and BBM uh, Enterprise messages, and we would pull them into retain. They're delivered in a format that is viewable and searchable and usable. Um, so it takes those BlackBerry logs and puts them into a format that's usable. Um, we've had a partnership with BlackBerry for many years. Um, and once again, this is a very unique way of doing it. Um, there aren't many in the, in the market that do it this way. So if you're using BlackBerry, um, we would encourage you to check this out and, and uh, give you that ability to have oversight on mobile communication. Okay, so with then moving on, for Android what we do is this once again is primarily for corporate owned devices because what we would do with Android is we would put place an app onto that Android device and that what that app will do is it's going to pull down all uh, SMS, so text messages, and MMS, the multimedia messages, and phone call logs, everything off of that phone uh, every text message, multimedia message, and phone call log off of that phone, and it's going to archive that. That allows you to have oversight on communications done via Android. Now, uh, that's a little sticky when it comes to a, a BYOD situation. Um, it's not really relevant for that because it's going to take everything down. And so if you have uh, employees that are bringing their own device, uh, that particular way of doing it probably isn't the best, but uh, that's all dictated by your policy. So um, we give you the functionality, and then you can you can set it how you like. Um, but generally, that is used in a, in a corporate-owned type environment where you are issuing devices to your to your employees um, you have that ability to have that oversight um, and then for iOS this is where it gets unique as as you know um, Apple has locked everything down and, and 
no one is able to get to iMessage and, and the native phone dialer, that kind of information, um, to be able to have oversight on that. And so what we have done is we've partnered with a company called Celltrust. And what Celltrust has is they have an app that is placed onto the phone. And with that app, there's a separate phone number that is, that is assigned to the phone. It doesn't require another SIM card. It's just a phone number there. Um, so it uses, like I said, it uses the same SIM card and it's all just done via the app. So they click on that app. Um, they click on that app and then uh, they're able to place phone calls and text. Um, and then, then what we do is we integrate directly with the Celtrust app to be able to archive that and have oversight on that information. And so what's great there is that it creates what we like to call a dual persona. So the personal information stays on the personal side, and then the business stuff is used uh, for business, right? And, and you have oversight on that organization communication because it's all done via that Celltrust app. The other thing, too, to take note of with Celltrust app is if it's going from a Celltrust user to a Celltrust user, so they both have that app on the phone, it's all encrypted, both phone call logs and text messages. Um, so this is important, I know, for uh, especially like for healthcare, where uh, you may be um, texting uh, personal health information and you can't do that unless it's done in an encrypted way. This would be the way that you could do that is using the Celltrust app. Um, also, this app is used, uh, it can also be used on Android. So that would be the use case. So for BYOD, the best solution would be to have that dual persona and then to have that oversight. For anything corporate owned, it would be the first two uh, solutions that we were talking about. So that's the mobile communication archiving. Um, once again, um, as was placed in the in the chat there, uh, if you've been monitoring that, uh, Jeff here at Microfocus has play, put a reminder that if you have questions, uh, feel free to put those through and we'll answer them as we go along. Now let's touch on social media for a moment here. Um, this is a big one, um, especially because I would imagine most of the people on this call have a social media page for their company, and they probably have employees at that company or at your organization that are communicating in an official way using social media, and that's where you need to be able to have oversight on that. And so what Retain does is it, it uh, we are we've partnered as i stated earlier with uh, archive social we integrate directly with that solution and what archive social does is it captures uh, full resolution pictures videos gifs and other data formats it has alerts for keywords questions and a personal identifiable info so if there's a question that somebody placed on your on your facebook page for example you'll get an alert stating that there's a question there or if you have other keywords that you want to have notifications for you can or personal personal identifiable info you probably don't want that up there, so you'll get an alert for that as well. Um, also, Archive Social connects directly to social media accounts without the login info. So what you do is you just uh, send them a URL, um, or you go to a URL, depending on what's going on. And if you are logged into that social media account, or the person who's going to authenticate to it, they just click on that link, and now it authenticates and starts archiving uh, information without having to collect somebody's login information. The supported platforms are Pinterest, Instagram, LinkedIn, Google+, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Flickr, Vimeo, and YouTube. Um, and all the information is archived in its original format, um, so it's easy to go back and search them, and it's all archived in that same central archive with email and mobile communication. Um, and the search tools are there uh, that I'll show you to be able to search, to perform e-discovery, to place holds on this information as well. Um, here's an example of the social search using Archive Social, um, and then so that's that's social media archiving. So we've touched on each module, how it works for email, how it works for social, how it works for mobile. So you can see that complete solution when it comes to retain um, unified archiving, and of course, um, as we touched on before, this new support for. Uh, Skype for business. So here's a few things just once again I touched on this is the idea of built-in e-discovery. Um, just a few reminders of what that means. There's redaction included. There's the ability to have litigation holds. There's an audit trail which is very important for regulated industries. So that means if uh, 
you have the ability to view everybody who's accessed the archive, what they've done, the searches they've done. Um, that's very important for compliance. You have configurable permissions so that you can grant different rights to different people so your users can have certain rights. Administrators, of course, have rights to everything. You can grant other rights to different teams as well. So say you have an auditor or maybe a, your legal team that needs to access the archive. You can grant them different rights, and I'll show that in just a moment. Um, there's the ability to place mailbox holds, litigation holds. I touched on that. Being able to perform, uh, it's a Google-like search. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, and then messages are threaded um, to be able to view things in context especially with that social media. So let's jump into the demo for just a moment. Um, here's just some, some, some screenshots. I'm going to fly by those so we don't go back to them. Um, here's a, an example of the Skype for Business, and I'll, and I'll show you this as well, but here's just how the messages would look um, when they're archived and retained as a Skype for Business message, and I'll show you that just in a moment here. But just know that they are, um, once again, these are, are threaded, so you can go back and see them in context. And then one thing I won't be showing, but I wanted to show everyone here is this is the, an example of the archive app. I talked about how you can access it via mobile. Um, this is what it looks like. And then one other thing I, I'm not going to show in a demo today, but I wanted everybody to see is this uh, offline or standalone archive viewer. So what's great about this is that what can happen is you can perform a search. Um, the search results you can export to a PDF or a PST, or you can export it to this standalone archive viewer. And what this does, it's a fully indexed standalone file um, that you can use and hand off, put it onto a portable media, DVD, even Dropbox, and hand that off to an outside team. And it's fully indexed so that team can search that subset of the archive and they can even uh, export it once again to a PST or a PDF um, preparing for uh, an audit or for litigation or just for uh, data management. So let's jump into that uh, demo really quick. Let's Let me minimize this here. Okay. Okay, let's. I'm going to show two things. Let's start off with. Um, I have two servers up here. One is. They're both demo systems, so they're not full of a ton of data, but uh, for our demo purposes, they work. Here's an example of uh, a user who has. The, now, just know this is kind of cleaner than what you'd normally see, but this is a user. We set it up just so you could see the Skype for Business. This is what uh, uh, a user would see when they go into their conversation history of Skype for Business. Now, if they, if generally what they would see is something more like this, where um, you would see all of your mailboxes, and then one of them would be your conversation history for Skype for Business as one of these folders. Um, like I said, in this particular case, it is a, a clean thing, but just realize that this folder here would would show up in something like this, and you could click on, a user could click on that and see all of their uh, Skype for Business messages. But here's an example of what it would look like. Um, here's some conversations. Um, you'll be able to see um, how it was threaded. So you'll see, okay, at 821, this is what it was said. 823, this was a response. Um, so you, like I said, you're able to see that in context and be able to view what was said so that, so that you know, you're not just seeing, oh, what does this message here mean? I don't understand. <laughs> you'll be able to see, okay, this is what exactly was happening and all of the conversation there. And that's important because when you do a search, so obviously with the browse, it's a little easier because you can see that. But when you do a search, if you were to just find this this conversation, um, you'd want to be able to see everything that was said there. Um, very important to be able to, to see that, that conversation in context and thread it. Here's another one, so just just be aware that that's kind of how it works. This one obviously was a short conversation, but that's how it looks within uh, Retain for that Skype for Business archiving. Let me show you a few other things here. I'm going to go back over to this other um, demo system that we have. Uh, one moment here. Okay. So let's touch on first, I'm going to come back over here to the um, system here. I'm going to touch on we what we talked about with users. So um, as I talked earlier, you can grant uh, different roles and rights, right? So you can allow your users to have certain rights, and then you can add other um, 
other named users. So let's take, for example, this admin. Um, an admin, of course, is going to have all rights. Um, let me show you kind of some of the rights that they can have. The ability to access reporting, audit logs, deletion manager. Um, so these are things that you can grant to each person. Then there's user level rights. What's amazing is that you can have um, grant different rights to different users you can set them up as you need to um, to be able to give them those rights to be able to access the archive so what's great for those of you who are in IT that are on this call is that you don't have to rely completely on IT to be able to manage this you could grant rights to other users so they can have rights to be able to access what is needed like I said like an auditor or maybe a legal team can have those different rights Another thing that's really important that I touched on is this ability to um, see what has been going on in the archive. Um, so there's that audit trail. Um, when you go along and you want to see what people have accessed, this is very important for compliance because you need to be able to know what has been going on, um, who has been accessing what. So let's just give it a second here um, to be able to go back and see an audit of the audit trail of what has been going on in this particular um, demo server. And it looks like it's going a little slow today, but that's all right. Um, while we're waiting for that, I'm going to show a few other things as well. Let's go into the monitoring piece, which is really cool because you can be able to see um, the status of your retained system really quickly. Um, you're going to be able to see what archiving has been done recently. Obviously, like I said, this is a demo system, so it looks like it's not running currently. Um, you'll be able to see what your last CPU usage was, your memory, um, the single instance storage. It'll kind of tell you what would happen if you didn't use single instance storage versus single instance storage. So once again, this is great, and I want to touch on this one more time, is that the, this is very important for email systems. So let's say you're using Exchange that doesn't support single instance storage. Um, the your message store can be huge where with retain you can get those off of your live message system off your live exchange office 365 group wise gmail and get them into retain it's it's archived using single instance storage and it's compressed so your your uh, storage size is much smaller and then it makes your live system run better because it's taken off of the live system and is now into retain so now your live email system runs better so here, okay, now, okay, so the audit's working now. It came back and you can see, okay, this user changed the user group. Um, a server was changed. You can see that messages were archived. So you can see what has been going on in this system um, to be able to uh, essentially audit the auditor, right? You can have a view of what has been going on and, be, and that is very important for uh, regulation compliance. One thing I do want to mention, and, and I would ask that nobody does this while we're on here, but if you want to uh, access this, all you have to do is go to demo.guava.com. Um, you can also see retain.guava.com has the ability to log in there. The login credentials are there um, so that you can play around with this system um, and see how it could how it can work for you. Let's show you deletion management really quick. I know we touched on that. Um, I'm going to hit litigation holds first of all. So there's a couple of ways in which you can place a litigation hold. First, you can uh, place a litigation hold on an entire mailbox. So you just select the person that you want to um, place a litigation hold. Um, add that selected user. Now this person, their entire, then hit save, their entire um, Oh, since in demo mode, it didn't save. But this entire person, Emma, their their entire mailbox, everything that's being archived is on litigation hold. So it will not be deleted. Nothing will be deleted. So even if it hits your policy, say your policy is delete after five years, after three years, whatever it is, this particular mailbox will not be deleted. So that's one way in which you can uh, place an entire uh person's archive on hold, on litigation hold, so it won't be deleted. Another thing I wanted to mention when we're in deletion management, kind of the opposite of that, is being able to delete a mailbox. So you, from here, you could go in here and you could delete everything in that entire user's archive. So all their email messages, their multimedia messages, their, meaning their text and their 
social media messages can be deleted directly from here. And what's important there is, especially for those uh, organizations that are dealing with uh, uh, EMEA, with the European market, or in Europe, um, there's that new GDPR and part of GDPR is this right to be forgotten. Um, there's a lot of privacy laws there. So um, uh, users in Europe have the ability to request that their, that their data be deleted. Um, and this is where you could do that um, to help comply with GDPR. Okay, so that was that's pretty much that's everything I wanted to show you on this side. Um, there's obviously a lot more to it, but um, those are some things that that can really help you see the power of retain. Let's go into the the search for just a moment so you can see how uh, how search works. So one thing that I want to make mention of as you start to search, once you hit the three three letters, it's going to start to auto suggest um, what is in the archive. And so you'll be able to see, okay, these are some things that are in the archive. The other thing it'll do, and, and it looks like it's running a little slow, is it's going to highlight that information in the archive. So where there's a the, as I started to type, it's going to uh, highlight those terms within the search terms that you did. What you can do as well from here is you can, uh, you can uh, drill down by item source, you know, if it was received or sent. You can drill down by type and once again I talked I touched on uh, that unified archive so everything is in one central archive this is this is that example so I do one search and everything is brought back so let's just see if we can drill down by uh, by let's see what we can find here so there was a task those came up um, an appointment there oh there was a BBM pin message um, appointments showed up there um, Let's go to status updates. There should be some there. Possibly. <laughs> Likes. Okay, so there's, okay, here they came up. So here's an example of some Facebook messages, some Facebook posts, uh, uh, that BBM pin message. Um, and it's all in that same central um, archive. So everything comes across when you do a search. It's not just, uh, um, you know, I have to do one search for email, I have to do another search for mobile, I have to do another search for social. You do one search and everything comes across. And then administrators, as I stated, have the ability to do certain things. So if, if you do this search and you're like, okay, all these messages that I just searched need to be um, placed on litigation hold. You just click the messages, you place litigation hold, it's going to um, apply that hold to all these messages. Um, from that one search. You could also place these messages in a confidential state. You can tag them. These tags can be uh, public tags or confidential tags. You can delete if enabled. You can forward these messages, export them as I stated that that can be exported to a PDF or a PST or that standalone archive viewer. You can restore them back directly. This is uh, for uh, email messages. You could restore them directly back to the live inbox and as I stated before, uh, named users have the ability to do that for the entire archive or for um, the their granted rights, and then users can do that for their personal archive. Another thing I want to show, so um, one thing just to remember, as I stated, it's kind of like we like to call it like the Google-like search because it's giving you suggested items within the archive. It makes that search easy. Um, then, of course, you have the advanced search where you can add different terms that want to be searched. So there's subject, recipient, category, um, item type, source, litigation. There's tons of things you can search on, like tags you can search on. Oops. Um, you can search on tags um, if there's those ta tags you can do it based on certain words that are in there and then those search results will come up um, uh, but there's different term there's different uh, search queries that you can create and what's great about it too is you can save those search queries or you can even share them um, and then of course we have deduplication so you can hide duplicate messages so uh, it makes your search terms better and uh, and you don't have have to be looking at those duplicate messages um, and like I said, those can be saved for later use. If you want to be able to have a bunch of um, advanced searches set up, you can. And then, of course, um, 
looking at a few other things you can look at exported items things that have been exported uh, we don't have anything right now you can create those de those tags and here's those tags the, the definition for those tags and you can go back and search them so those are some of the things um, when it comes to retain where you have that ability to have that central archive um, your users can search their own personal archive and the administrators have access to the entire archive um, that unified archive and of course as we touched on before um, we do have that ability now to archive um, Skype for business messages. So let's jump back in to the ending of the presentation. Once again, if you have questions, um, go ahead and put those through. It looks like we do have one. So this is a good uh, stop point to be able to uh, hit on those questions. Let me just look here really quick. So the question is, um, the export function exports to PDF directly or exporting from retain to PDF still requires the retain still requires the retain viewer. Um, great question. So the question is is if you export, let me just pull that uh, back up. If you export these messages, let's just go back to this here. If you export messages, do you have to export them to the viewer? No, you don't. Um, you can export these directly to a PDF. Um, just state if you want the attachments, the course ending, etc. Um, export them. It'll run an export job. It's going to export directly to a PDF. You don't have to have the viewer. You can export them to PDF directly from here. What's nice too is the PDF, um, um, you can browse messages and you can view the entire thing directly from that uh, PDF that's running right now that export if it will come back to that and look at it and see if we have the export um, in just a minute you can kind of see what that PDF looks like but you don't have to you don't have to export it to the viewer and then to the PDF you can export it directly from here to a PDF great question Okay, I'm going to jump back up here. So once again, just to kind of summarize, and these are the high things about what we've talked about, um, the eight key features in Retain, what makes it different than the competition, and what the value that it brings is that multi-platform, mixed environment, unified archiving, the ability to archive. And this is actually more common than you'd think, is those organizations that have multiple email systems. So say they're running... Um, Exchange and Gmail, or they're running GroupWise and Office 365, we can support both platforms or multiple platforms simultaneously. Another thing that's great about Retain is you can uh, deploy it on-prem or you can deploy it via the cloud. And we have three options for the cloud. We have the cloud in our data centers, in the public cloud like AWS, or in a partner cloud. And those can be geographic specific depending on what you need. We touched on the flexible archive access. That's also a, a key feature there. We touched on intelligent archiving, be able to make sure that everything is archived within Retain. Um, we hit on those e built-in e-discovery tools to be able to search, perform litigation holds. Um, that's all built into Retain is one of the key features. That smart, confidential, rule-based tagging, I touched on that, the be, uh, being able to create those tags, being able to make them um, confidential. And then you can also create tags that um, you can do them so that as they're being archived messages, as messages are being archived, I should say, um, that they're tagged right off the bat. And that's something that you set up as uh, with your archive jobs. Or uh, you can create them after the fact. And then, of course, with Retain, having being able to support multiple systems, you have the ability to migrate email systems easily because um, Retain is in a platform agnostic format. So say today you're running Exchange and tomorrow you're going to go to Gmail, um, Retain would support both of those. So you'd have your Exchange messages in Retain, your Gmail system newly deployed, you tied Gmail to Retain, and now the... Uh, messages from Exchange are in Retain, and then going forward, everything from Gmail is in there as well, making your migration easy um, because you don't have to worry about older messages. And then, of course, we've partnered with uh, TDS to be able to migrate your archive. So if you are on, a, on an archiving solution and you want to move over to Retain, we have a, a, a clear and seamless path to be able to move your information over. Then the final one is the ability to connect to files, anything with a with an index, so um, Laserfiche, SharePoint, we can connect to those file systems so that when you do a search, it will also search those systems. We don't archive those files, but we would, those file systems, but we can connect to them, um, which makes uh, that retained search even that much more powerful. 
Okay, so it looks like there's a number of questions, and we'll get to those. But uh, I would say some some of your next steps is to go out and uh, see how this could work for your own organization. You can download a free 30-day trial. You can get your own personalized demo. They can show you, you know, how it would work in your organization. Um, just visit retainarchiving.com, and uh, you can get. Uh, that demo, the trial download. You could even get a quote uh, to see how it could work. We'd, we'd love to work with you. Um, we know that Retain is unique in the market space by having that unified archive, and we know that we can help you make sure that you can manage your data, um, be in compliance with regulations, and uh, be able to archive everything we talked about in that one central archive. Now, it does look like we have some times for questions, and there are a number of questions that have been brought up, so I'm going to... Um, go through these here really quick. So the first one is, is there any way or integration that can work with other with another solution for analytics? Um, yeah, if, if you have an analytics solution um, that you want to tie to retain, we do have APIs to be able to do that. Um, because yeah, that's really important. You want to have analytics of the archive. We are looking and it is on our roadmap to be able to include analytics in retain so that it would be something that's part of retain um, look for that but if you do have a current analytics solution that is something that we could uh, discuss on how we can um, integrate that in there but there is a way to do that uh, the next one is the is the Lotus notes module ready now yes um, IBM notes is available um, to be able to archive uh, that so you do have the ability to uh, archive Lotus or IBM notes now. Uh, let's see. The next one is, can you migrate from Retain to another archiving solution? Uh, there is a path to do that. Uh, we obviously would encourage you not to do that. <laughs> uh, stick with Retain. But if you do have that, there is there is an ability to do that. Um, that's something I could, uh, Carl, we could, um, I'll follow up with you later about exactly how that would work. Um, but there is the ability to do that. If, you know, if at some future date you need to make some a move, um, there is the ability to do that. Okay. The next one, this is a good data point, um, good question, is the connection to SharePoint, for example, ready? So it says archive or connection to SharePoint ready. So archiving SharePoint we don't do, but connecting it, yes, there is the ability to do that. Um, there's a little bit of work that needs to be done to do that, but as long as there's that indexing, we can we can work on that. Um, and it looks like they have a customer asking for that, but yes, we can, we can do that. So once again, uh, Brian, I'll have somebody follow up with you on exactly how you would uh, get that done. And any other questions, feel free to put those through. These are these are really good. Um, another question that came through is how does it work with multiple devices, so mobile devices? So um, this is a good question because this is kind of a pricing question. And so I know this comes up a lot, so I'll touch on that. Is um, The way that Retain is priced is a little different depending on what system you're doing. So Retain has a base price. So there's a base price for retain, and then each module is, is an additional price. So for email, it's based on the number of seats, so the number of mailboxes that are being archived. It doesn't matter what uh, modules you have there. If you have GroupWise or Exchange or Gmail, it doesn't matter. It's not based on that. It's just based on number of seats. So uh, if you have 10,000 seats and it's on mixed environment, that's fine. Um, retain is price per seat. Then when it comes to mobile, it's price per device. So um, it's going to tie back to that user. So let's say I have um, a BlackBerry device and an Android device, and I want both of the, and both of those are corporate owned. So we're archiving both of them. Um, that's priced per device, but it's tied back to me as a user. Um, so it doesn't matter how many devices I have. It's all tied back to me, but, um, it's price per device that's archived. And then with uh, social media, it's a little bit different too. It's based on number of records. And so there's tiers. So um, you don't have to worry about, okay, I need to I need to archive Facebook. That's one cost. I have to archive Twitter. That's another. No. It, all those platforms are included um, in the social media archiving um, piece. But what is the, the pricing tiers go by number of records and, and there's tiers there. So that's how that's pricing price. So Great question. It kind of led me down a road of a lot of things, but yes, uh, multiple users per multiple devices per user can can work. And then yeah, I touched on pricing there. 
We're getting close to the hour. If you have qu other questions, feel free to put those through. I don't see any more coming in. Uh, I'm going to look really quick, make sure the chat doesn't have any. Okay, that looks like all of them for now. Um, thanks everyone for being here and for your interest in this webinar. Um, we're grateful that you could come. Uh, we noticed that there was a lot of people online, so we know that this was a, a, a good topic. Look for an email with the recording. Um, if you have further questions, feel free to reach out to me. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks everyone for being here, and uh, we'll hope to see you on the next one.